in this video it's iPad 4 versus the iPad mini. So the iPad 4 starts off at $540 in Australia and the iPad mini starts off at $370 in Australia. So there is a $170 price difference between the two uh, for the 16 gigabyte models. I've done Geekbench videos on both of these, check them out on my channel, youtube.com forward slash iTech everything. But I'll just show you the scores. As you can see, the iPad 4 has a Geekbench score of 1,770. And the iPad mini has a Geekbench score of 756. So the iPad 4 has about 1,000 points higher on the Geekbench score than the iPad mini. So going through the specs, this has an A6X dual-core processor with quad-core graphics and a gigabyte of RAM. This has an A5 processor, which is an old processor, with only 512 megabytes of RAM, and it's dual-core as well. And as you can see from those benchmark results, the iPad 4 definitely does pack more horsepower. Talking about displays, the iPad 4 has a Retina display with a resolution of 2048 by 1536, whereas the iPad mini has a poor resolution of 1024 by 768 and quite frankly, it looks nowhere near as good as the iPad 4. This is about 162 pixels per inch, whereas the iPad 4 is 264 pixels per inch. Now, don't get me wrong, the Mini's display looks fantastic. Uh, the display is actually laminated to the glass, and it gives it a near 3D sort of effect. And if you've never used a Retina display before, chances are you're going to be extremely happy with this display. However, if you come from the iPad 3, for example, after using it for about six months, which has the retina display. Your eyes get used to it over time, and going back to a non-retina display, um, it's easier to see the pixels in text, for example. Here we are on Apple's homepage, and this won't translate on the camera most likely, but the text on here looks fantastic. On here, it looks blurry. So I've closed out of all the open apps. Now let's go ahead and launch Temporum. Actually slightly faster on the Mini, surprisingly. Both of these new iPads feature the new Lightning connector, which is a lot smaller than the previous 30-pin dock connector. Stacking the iPad Mini on top of the iPad 4, you can see the size difference right there. This is 7.9 inches and this is 9.7 inches. And the iPad mini has a really nice design to it with the slate back, kind of similar to the black iPod touch. And the iPad 4 has the same old iPad design. And in terms of design, this looks much, much nicer in my opinion. And it also has metal volume buttons rather than the plastic buttons on this one. Essentially what the iPad mini is, is a cheaper version of the iPad 4. It has a low resolution screen and a much older processor, which is nowhere near as fast as the big boy. However, it doesn't actually need to be as fast as this, because keep in mind this is powering about half the resolution in comparison to this. So this keeps up with this pretty well and it still seems very snappy. Overall, um, if you don't mind the lower resolution screen and you want a smaller device, I wholeheartedly recommend the uh, iPad mini if you want to stay in the iOS ecosystem. And if you can't live without your retina display now that you've gotten used to it, I would say steer clear of this as you will notice it if you're coming from this most likely. So that's about it for this video. If you have any questions about these devices at all, drop them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up as I really appreciate it and click subscribe right above the video.